Hello everybody. So it is the start to a new reading vlog. It is now the Animal Crossing Readathon. Uh, it started a couple days ago, but I haven't really gotten a chance to vlog. I, the only book I've started is Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. I've been listening to it in pieces, funny enough. Maybe two hours in this 10 hour audiobook, and it's a lot. Our main character, Charlie, uh, She's in one of those psychiatric wards after trying to commit suicide. And we slowly learn more about her and the topics are pretty heavy. I'm currently outside like waiting for my shift to start. I am actually waiting for my nails to dry. I thought it would be the greatest idea to try to do my nails this morning and I keep messing them up so I keep repainting them and now I'm like 45 minutes before work and they're still pretty wet. So we're gonna hope and pray that they like finally dry. Like, I'm outside and actually I've been trying to like fix one of these nails for the past 20 minutes. I think it's because the nail polish I have is just getting old and so it's clumpy and so it's not going on right, it's going on too thick. But we've committed now because eight of them turned out okay. And I have no shame. I'm outside at this nice little picnic table doing my nails. And a couple people have gone by. There's, you know, they've given me looks. I'm like, oh, this random lady's doing her nails outside. Well, I am. So I'm going to wait for this to dry and then I'm going to put on some of this lotion. Uh, I've redone one nail so often that my hands are like white, like they're so ashy because of how dry they are. But that's pretty much it. This is like a quick, fast-paced um, check-in because the readathon has started. It's been a couple of days. I was mistaken in my reading uh, TBR video for this vlog, um, or this readathon rather. I, I thought it was like only a week, but it's two weeks. So I got plenty of time to try to hit all the different prompts. What I should do is start reading Crescent City if I have a chance of trying to finish it within these two weeks. But. Let's see how well I manage my time. So no one was here, and this fell down all by itself from up here somewhere. Rowling. So it was here. How the heck did it fall? I, I don't understand. So for a while I was under the suspicion that the this library was haunted, and I just com got confirmation, so that's always good. So I've just had the busiest day of my life. I haven't read at all today, but honestly, I'm too frazzled to really check in right now. I've read some more. I've completed at least one more challenge. I'll talk about it later, okay? I promise. Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday. It is the second week to this readathon, and I didn't check back in like I promised I would. Friday was just so much that I was completely out of spoons, and so I spent my weekend binge watching Avatar The Last Airbender. I watched the entirety of season one and season two, and I don't have any regrets. I didn't, well, I was about to say I didn't read it all, but I was in social isolation like you should be for two days, didn't go outside, and so. I was starting to feel a little bit of cabin fever, so as it hit dusk, I was like, you know what, there shouldn't be a whole lot of people out, I think I can go for a walk. And so I did go for a walk and continued listening to Girl in Pieces. That's what I have been listening to the entirety of this readathon. Um, I'm about three quarters of the way through it. I would say the vibe is basically like Girl Interrupted. Uh, this girl, Charlie, who's our main character, is struggling with self-harm and she attempted suicide and so the story st starts off with her in this psych ward. She gets released with the doctor thinking oh she's gonna be living with her mother for a little while and then she's gonna be put in a halfway house. That is not the case. She has a terrible relationship with her mother. Uh, her mother used to hit her and so she was like you know what we know this isn't gonna work and so she like takes off to Arizona. At this point she's in Arizona she's living in this really dingy apartment. She has a job making like barely a minimum wage as a dishwasher at this coffee shop and she is starting to fall back in old habits. She hasn't started cutting again but she started sleeping with her co-worker who's at least 10 years older than her. She's like 17 in this and she's sleeping with somebody who's probably like 27. It's cool. And this guy is an alcoholic and he's using drugs. Uh, they don't specifically say what type of drugs it is, 
but it's a baggie of like powder, so I'm assuming cocaine, but I have no idea. And she's buying it for him because his, he's work, this coffee shop is actually his sister's coffee shop and his sister took him in with the stipulation, hey, you don't, leave, you don't drink on the job and you don't leave the job while you're here. Trying to like curb this habit of his, but he's found ways around it by having her go shopping for him. And she's doing it because you can tell that she wants to be loved. She wants to be liked. She's just trying to find her place here. And this, this is a lot. Like she's making these choices and I'm getting really agitated and frustrated. And there's more like very worried for her. I'm like, honey, this, this is not, you're not in a good place right now. Now I'm three quarters of the way of the audiobook, and I haven't listened any farther because both her and this guy, they're at the coffee shop and, like, hey, and he's like, hey, no one's here. No one's going to be here for a while. Let's totally screw in my sister's office. And she feels very uncomfortable about doing it, but he's like, oh, he's insistent. Oh, he wants this. And then she does it anyways, despite not really wanting to. And, and they open the door after cleaning themselves up and one of their coworkers like deer in headlights and he goes, I'm really sorry what's about to happen here steps aside and there's his sister. I'm experiencing such secondhand mortification that I haven't pressed play since. And I know for a fact I'm gonna have to in order to get to the, like the tail end of this. But this book is a lot. I was hoping for something that would like get my tears going and it's not necessarily making, yes, it's sad, but it's not enough to like really wanna make me cry. It's just almost too much. Since I am so close to being done with this, I want to attempt to finish it for this readathon. But I'm glad I got rid of this book now. I never, I wouldn't see me like rereading this again. But I. And when I like quickly mentioned on Friday, like uh, a book that I've already hit some sort of prompt already, it's The Midwinter Witch, the one that I'm using to count for family ties. I actually got about 100 pages of it while I was on the train coming home on Thursday and so I actually had to put a bookmark in it save my spot and then like hey I'm gonna finish this later I see me finishing this either today or tomorrow it's a graphic novel it's a very quick read that's technically one prompt done already so family ties as soon as I finish that book that's going to be family ties and Rossetti when I did my TBR I requested the Tea Dragon Society comic book that's uh that's what Tori Tories. I don't know why I'm spacing on her on her name right now. I know her channel name, Medusa Reads. That's her host pick. And I haven't been able to pick it up because the library has been closed for the last couple of days. I requested it and then on Friday while I was at work, I got a notification saying my pickup was available at the main branch and I work at the little branch. And when I got that notification, I was like, oh, I'll just come to work on my usual shift on Saturday. I'll pick it up then and I'll start reading it. So things went down on Friday, which is why it was just so much on Friday. Due to the coronavirus, the library is now closed to patrons for the next two weeks. Patrons cannot come in. The two branches that we have is absolutely closed. No one can go there, not even the workers, it's just closed. Now the main branch, they're still letting us work and we're doing like hold like curbside pickup. So we're still pulling people's requests and then they can like come patrons when I say they they can come and still pick up their holds outside like they can't come in but I at least can still come in and work I don't know what else they're gonna have us do considering most of my job is helping patrons yes there's still stuff to do without helping patrons but I don't think it's enough work for everyone to still stay on payroll but honestly I'm not gonna say anything because the girl still needs the money as a part-timer I see me being one of the first to be cut loose at least until this blows over. But because we found this out on Friday that libraries were closing down, I was responsible for closing down the building. The first two hours of my shift was actually calling everyone who had holds at the libraries, like, hey, the book you requested is here. You have until the end of day today to come get it at this location, or you have to go to the, the main branch next week. This building will be closed for the next two weeks. And I had to call everyone that we had and it just took so long. That took all of my spoons. And then I still had to do my usual chores and then like close out the building at the last like 45 minutes of my shift. And of course I kept getting people coming in and asking the same questions. I'm like, well, how long? 
how, what about our holds? And they had just the same handful of questions. I had this one grandmother, she was like, so what am I supposed to do with my kids while they're out of school? Like, my grandkids don't have anything to do now. What am I supposed to do? I'm like, I didn't see anything. I kind of shrugged my shoulders and back my mind. I'm like, I don't know, practice social isolation as suggested by the CDC, but what the heck do I know? Just realized that I think I said social isolation and not social distance, but y'all know what I meant. Lady, just keep your distance. So that day was just a lot, but I got it done, did all of that by myself, and I needed a, a very well-deserved break this weekend, so Avatar was my life this weekend. So that's pretty much the, the check-in that I have for you. I feel like I'm only going to need to read three books in order to complete all of these challenges, but we'll see. Now I'm going to go into work, finish my coffee, and kind of just be in, in a ghost town because that's how it's been all day. Everything or the majority of things is closed. Normally I'm in a very busy square. Normally the train is super busy. I'm usually having to fight for a seat, but there was maybe four other people on the train with me this morning and I'm just... It's going to feel very weird not being surrounded by people today. Good morning, everybody. It is the 18th. Uh, last I checked in, I said it was Monday, so it has been a couple of days. Uh, when I checked in, it was like, I don't know what they're going to have us do since we're not helping patrons. It's going to be so quiet. Oh, no. It was not quiet. I've never been so naive. I was working a full, like, seven-hour shift. Normally, I would work a little bit longer than that. No, I lie. It was six hours. But anyways, it was a pretty like decent sized shift and I maybe sat down for like 10 minutes it was just such a long day and we were offering uh curbside like pickup for people like they would call over the phone like hey I want this book and then we'd check it out and like meet them outside with it but things have changed since I last checked in basically now we, we stopped curbside pickup and I'm working half my hours because they only want a skeleton crew in the building because they are trying to limit the amount of people in However, they gave us like work to do at home so we can still like put in our hours and still get paid. So I appreciate what the town is trying to do to make sure everyone still gets paid. Unfortunately, they couldn't like offer anything for the pages, which are the people who like shelve everything. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move. I'll be with you in a second. Oh my God people oh my god i'm so f***ing heated i'm sitting on my bench minding all my own business talking to you guys and these three older guys had the audacity to sit next to me when there was two other benches across the freaking park y'all don't know me and i could be sick it's also really f***ing rude the audacity of old men i swear i had like of course i pretended to be on the phone and i'm like sorry dad i have to move these old guys decided to sit next to me i hope that shamed them and i hope it pissed them off Sorry, I'm just very tired, very overwhelmed, and just the f***ing audacity of it when we all need to be keeping social distance. Anyways, we're super busy at work, and yesterday I had the longest day too. To get to work at 9 a.m., I had to set my alarm for 4.30, started getting ready for, for the day at 5 because I couldn't bring myself to get out of bed at 4.30. Finally make it to work, and then of course, it took me this long because the MBTA is on like in a reduced schedule, which is why it took me so long to get to work. And when I finally got out of work, I went to take the bus. Bus was 10 minutes early, so I missed it. I saw it drive away. And then the next two buses just never showed. And so when I finally caught the bus, it made me miss my train. So I left work at 4.30 p.m. Would you like to know when I finally got home? 9 p.m. It would have been 9.30 had I walked home, but I had my husband come get me. You know why I'm so heated, actually? It's because how the park goes, there is two benches on the side of maybe about eight feet away from this picnic table. And on the other side of the picnic table, there's two more benches kind of mirroring where the other two are. And the fact that they decided to sit within six feet of me during a pandemic 
when they're the high risk ones. It's also rude in general, even if it wasn't pandemic, why did you, why would you sit so close to, to a woman you did not know? Guys, I'm just overly tired and I think that's why it has me so freaking heated. So I did finish a book yesterday, but you know what? I think I'm just gonna drink my coffee, calm down a little bit and hope to God I can have a nap sometime today. I'm just so tired. I have the reduced schedule to look forward to. So even though my shift ends at 1.30, I'm not getting home till about 3.30. And it's normally like, and it's normally like a 30 minute like commute home too. I'm supposed to be like this for at least a month too. I'm like losing it guys, I'm losing it. I'll talk more about this book later when I'm less emotional. <laughs> One eternity later. All right, so it has been a while since I checked in. To the point when I did my nails at the beginning of the video, they've already chipped off and I've already had to take them off because that's how long it's been since I've checked in. Um, let's see if I can remember what happened since then. Excuse me, I feel like I gotta sneeze. So the last time I checked in, I was obviously upset and I just needed to step back and take a breather from filming, but it didn't mean that I stopped participating in the readathon. But a lot did change since I last checked in for the readathon. And so I was upset about these gentlemen um, as I was like going into work for the public library that I work at. It was nonstop trying to get orders in and to the curbside for people because the public library for a week, we actually did um, pick up. You'd call in with a request, we'd set it up for you and then bring it out to you outside. So what, which meant that like the phones were just going absolutely off the hook it was just it was insanity and it was the the case on friday interesting enough on on that friday i had actually grabbed a bunch of stuff to take home because like oh i'm gonna have a long weekend at least until until the next time i get to go to work so i'm gonna grab as much as i can just so i can pick through pick what i truly want and then bring the rest back that is not the case Actually, uh, that day was the last day it was available to people, staff included, and so the building is now closed. Massachusetts is in a shelter in place now. My other job is the corporate library. This corporate library is actually in a transportation company, which means I work for an essential business, which means I still have that job to go to. Now, the first thing that I finished for this readathon that I vaguely mentioned when the last time I checked in was The Midwinter Witch by Molly Knox Osterhag. I was reading this, or at least flipping through this while I was on the train, and so I used a bookmark to keep my place, and then I continued on with it the next day. I believe that this is the finale to a trilogy, but I could be mistaken. It The ending writes as if it's a it's a finale, that it's done, but it also writes in a way if the author chooses to continue with it, they can. I can't necessarily talk a whole lot about this one because it is like a third book in the series, but the book starts with the witch boy, which I have over here actually, right here. He's our actual, um, main character that shows up in all the books, as you can see here, he's right there. It's part of this community that the boys are shifters and all the girls are witches and that is your role you don't have a choice in that but he has a tough time like shape-shifting and he actually feels more comfortable as a witch and it's him trying to find self-acceptance and his family trying to find acceptance it really mirrors the same discussion that we have about gender identity and as the story continues we meet I, this person I believe in book two, I could be mistaken, they, they could possibly that they show up in book one, I don't quite remember anymore, and she definitely shows up at book two, and then shows up in this one as well. Uh, book two seems to focus more on her, and book three kind of vaguely focus more on her, and the same uh, situation that our main character has in regards to their magic identity. Because in this one, and what seems like the conversation is up and done, uh, the family has a family like reunion, and at this reunion, you compete to be either the Midwinter Witch, which is what the witches compete for, or I forget what uh, what the shifters compete for, some sort of run thing. And he wants to join in and do the Midwinter Witch contest, and everyone's like, no, you're we don't believe that you should have the opportunity to participate. So the gender identity discussion continues in this one as well. 
I ended up rating this book three out of five stars. The next book that I completed for this readathon is Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. I was listening to this as an audiobook, and on that Thursday before the end of the readathon, I just like had it on while I was at work and just played it for the majority of the day just to get through this book because honestly I didn't really care for it and I just wanted to finish it so I can say I completed this challenge. I ended up rating this two out of five stars. I can see where the author was going and I appreciated the the discussion that they were trying to have. I also like at the end of the book there's um, helpline numbers for, for the reader should they need it. And I like at the end of the audiobook after the story is done, the author herself actually gets odd and say, I was this girl, I struggled with self-harm and should you also struggle with self-harm, here, here are the, the numbers that you can look into. So like I said, I appreciated what the author is trying to do. I just found the, the content to be too much. I didn't really necessarily care for the writing style. So I was A on this, which is why I rated it two stars. So we get to the last day of the readathon. I think at this point I just needed to complete the host read because these books that I just mentioned actually counted for majority of the prompts, which I will actually go through after talking about everything I did read. And so the host read I was able to get, thankfully before the library closed, like the day that the library closed or the day like the last time I was in before it closed, I was able to get The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. And this was Medusa Reads, who was one of the hosts. This was her pick. The book is adorable. I just love the aesthetic of it. Cover is so cute and you open it up. Beautiful. I actually thought that this was a standalone and so I was very confused at the majority of what's happening. I didn't think there was a whole lot of backstory. And so I think that at first affected my enjoyment of it. Tea Dragon Society kind of just plops you down in this world. Um, we start with this little girl and her mom. Her mom's trying to teach her, at least I assume it's her mother, uh, trying to teach her the art of blacksmithing. And later on when the girl is at the market, she comes across a little tea dragon who's in trouble. And so she saves the little dragon and then brings it back to its owner. And the owner, out of gratitude, invites her to learn about taking care of tea dragons. The story mostly focuses on like the importance of keeping up with, with traditions and making sure um, old information doesn't get lost to history. But I feel like there are certain parts that I would have loved to have seen a, a more of a focus on just to have seen, I guess, a more well-rounded story. Like I said, this isn't a standalone. This is the first book to a series, so I'm sure like whatever I'm missing will actually get explained later on. I just love the overall vibe of this so much that I actually rated this 4 out of 5 stars. This was definitely my favorite read of the week, or, or rather the two weeks. Alrighty, so we're now at the prompts now that I've talked about everything that I did read. Rossetti was Don't Forget to Save, read a book of your choice while using a bookmark. I have to say, uh, I haven't been playing the actual Switch game because I can't justify purchasing it right now, especially with my hours up in the air as they are. So I've been playing my old DS game and I swear to God, I've forgotten how like how the battery life isn't nearly as long as the Switch. So one time it actually died on me before I got to save and Rossetti yelled at me. And another time I could have sworn I saved. Maybe I didn't do it quite right because it's been that long and he yelled at me again. <sighs> it's been rather frustrating with Rossetti. But anyways, tangent aside, like I said, I used the Midwinter Witch for that prompt because I ended up using a bookmark for it. K.K. Slider, listen to an audiobook or read a book that has musical elements. I ended up listening to Girl in Pieces as an audiobook. I was able to get it through Hoopla and so I just had it through the app on my phone. Able Sisters, read a book with strong family themes and that again is the Midwinter Witch because that focused on family and family accepting you for who you are. And also there was an element in the story of like what counts as family, which I really liked because sometimes your biological family isn't necessarily your real family. And I'm glad that they made like a notice of that. Tom Nook, read a book that you have recently purchased or checked out of the library. As you can see, library book, library book, and library book. In fact, the audiobook was through Hoopla and so that was taken out 
as you know from the library so I didn't purchase any of these and so that all of these actually count for that prompt. Animal Crossing GameCube read a book that has been on your TBR the longest or a reread of an old favorite. Girl in Pieces was that choice for that prompt. Uh, I did mention in my TBR that I got the ARC when I went to BEA in Bokan in Chicago a few years back and roughly around the like when I first started doing booktube about four or five years ago. I just never got around to it. And now I've read it and now I'm, I'm glad that I eventually got rid of the arc because I didn't care for this. Maybe I, I would have loved it then, but I don't love it now. And then the bonus prompt was read one of the host choices, which was the Tea Dragon Society. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, sorry for not really vlogging for this readathon. Things have been uh, rather hectic here, and I'm sure it's been hectic wherever you are. And now I'm kind of glad that things are not quite settled, but now I know what's expected of me at this point, and now it's just playing the waiting game. So that's all I pretty much have for you for this video. Let me know down in the comments of your thoughts on some of these books. Did you participate in the readathon? I hope you're doing well and you're safe wherever you're from. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I guess it's Tata for now. Bye, guys. Thank you.